Gene Deal, happy to have you right back on the platform, my man. Man, I got a residency, bro. <laughs> I'm officially <laughs> the number one residency position on Art of Dialogue, man. This is my new employment. Hey, the people love you, man. I got to keep bringing you back, man. Yeah, I don't know about that, man, but I appreciate you. You know what I mean? I really appreciate you on today, man. You know what today is, right? Yeah, Biggie birthday. It had been the notorious Biggie Smalls 52nd birthday, bro. Oh, man. It would have been his 52nd birthday. Could you imagine, man? the people he would have put on in Brooklyn, the people that he would have made great. Oh, go ahead, I'm with you, bro. Yeah, man, happy B-Day to Big, man. Happy B-Day to Big. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So with that being said, man, let's get right into it, my man. What you think about the apology video by Diddy? What apology video? He didn't apologize, bro. He did not apologize. You know, if he was going to apologize, he should apologize to Ms. Wallace. That's for the, that should have been the first person that he should apologize. No, 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 no. He should apologize to Misa. He should apologize to Kim. He should apologize to Ms. Wallace. He should apologize to Wolf's mother, Ms. Jones. That was not an apology, bruh. That was somebody saying, I'm upset, or I'm mad, or it's bad, or it's effed up that I got caught. That's what that was about, bro. That was, was <laughs> that was, if that was an apology, that was the most, what they call it, Ingenuous, <laughs> I guess that's the word. I'm messing it up, but whatever. That that was phony and baloney on a pickle sandwich. I could say that a whole lot better because it was not an apology, man. You know what I'm saying? For what he did and how he did it, I didn't see an apology. You know, he may have used the word "I apologize" for what. He never admitted that he, he say the video. So if you didn't see the video, you don't know what he's apologizing to. And I know it was shown to a lot of people. A lot of people cared not to look at it because they heard what it was about. You see, Common came on TMZ and he said, yo, listen to me. When I knew it was about, I wasn't going to even look at it. I don't want that kind of spirit. I don't want that kind of energy. So a lot of people who know what it's about or heard what it's about didn't even look at it. He said, yo, you should have been asked apologize for striking Cat Cassie in her head. I apologize for throwing her to the ground and dragging her and treating her the way that I did. He should have been apologizing like that to her. And then apologize to the people, but it didn't happen, bro. It didn't happen. That was some lame bull crap. See, the same thing to make you laugh, it's the same thing to make you cry, bro. We know that growing up. You see that everything that this dude crushed people's lives, led them into the den of iniquity. Everything that he done is now crashing down on him. He got a whole lot of apologizing to do, bro. And it has to be way more sincere than that stuff that he just put on his Instagram. So you feel like the apology video wasn't sincere? It was phony and baloney on a pickle sandwich, man. <laughs> that shit was, it wasn't nothing sincere about that, bro. I heard that the behavior people did, uh, 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 
um, they looked at it and they did an analysis of it. And I believe they came out with the same thing and they professionals. But anybody could have seen that was baloney. Yeah, you got a lot of people that feel like, you know, it wasn't a good idea for, you know, Diddy to make that video. He only got he only made it because he got caught. You got to realize a month before that he put out this statement. It wasn't even a month. He put out the statement. Everybody going to see the truth is going to come out. These ain't nothing but lies on me. Come on, man. I don't want to seem like, you know, I'm I, 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 I'm I'm bashing the dude, man. But you got to do better than that, bro. You got to do better than that, man. And that's for real. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of people that feel like, you know, if he was really sincere, you know, he would have apologized once, you know, Cassie came out with the lawsuit, you know? Well, I can understand. You got to realize he's getting his money now on marketing. So by him getting his money on marketing himself, if he could not apologize, if he could get away with it, He's going to do that because he knows that's going to hurt him. You understand what I'm saying? He knows that's going to hurt him. So I can understand that from a business point of it. There's no way he can apologize or say some stuff. Or then again, maybe if he did apologize, yo, Cassie, I'm sorry, you correct. I treated you like this, that, and that stuff probably would have never come, came out. Gave her a little 30 million. If he had gave her the 10 million, I don't know who's advising him. When she wanted the 10 million, if he had gave her 10 million and said, I'm sorry, I apologize, that stuff probably would have never came out. But he didn't do that. He waited until they put it out. And like I said before, now he got to pay the piper. Yeah, he should have paid Cassie when he had a chance, man. How you feel about the statement that his baby mom made? She came out with a statement saying that she knows exactly how, you know, Cassie feels after seeing that video. Wow. That was big, though. That was big in so many ways, man. I was catching flack, talking about... I never heard of that before. I never heard that Puff ever put his hands on me, sir. You just making shit up. If you saw it, you know why you ain't do nothing about it and see it. And, and I always say, Mighty, when I heard something, somebody, and these are the people who were saying it, I always say that. I don't try to claim everything. If I see it, I'm going to tell you I saw it if I wanted to be known. But I said, I heard he beat us so bad, she had to, Misa was a little thing then too, man. I mean like, Misa was a little thing, beautiful little woman, but she was, Misa was like, cause I used to body, when I left Bad Boy, check this out. And people don't know this. When I left the last, when I stopped working for Puff, I started working for Misa. Misa called me up, yo, Gene. I'm scared. I'm afraid. I don't, I be wanting to go to parties. I want to be, I be out. And I know Puff or nobody going to do anything if I got you with me. I used to bodyguard Misa. She didn't go out all the time. She was trying to get her business up. But when she wanted to go to places and be out and be seen, I was with her. You understand? Misa, is like, you know, she may be Asian descent, but she like one of those strict, like those down South mothers. <laughs> like, yo, she was, she did not play. I don't know how Justin got to do some of the things that he's doing now, probably because he went to live with his daddy, but his mama didn't play that. I used to bodyguard her. And that's because she was afraid to be out because he didn't want, she didn't want, if she was out with somebody or she was out doing her thing, she didn't want him to say or do anything to her or nobody else. It was for other people too. You understand? So this only proves that the information that I heard somebody 
and they told me that Puff beat him because of the Eric Sermon. He thought she was dating Eric Sermon or Eric Sermon had dropped him off. He was, he was in a white Mercedes Benz. He had dropped her off. He got mad and started beating on her. When he ran, he, when he caught up with her. This only proved that that one thing happened and some other things probably happened. Because she said that it only brings back her own trauma, bro. People don't understand, man, when things like that happen to you, man, and you see it happen to other people, that, what was that, PDST or PSDT or something like that? That shit is a MS. Hey, yo. Yo, and yo, it was so crazy, man. You know, the way they explained it, that yo, <laughs> he beat that woman till she was crawling up under a car, man. No matter how small she was, she was crawling up under the car, man. You got to be real scared, man. <laughs> That's crazy. I know it ain't funny, but it's crazy. He was beating her till she ran up, up under the car, man. Wow, man. So it got that bad, man? The way they was explaining to me, man. And I'm like, yo, did you... I'm The first thing I, I want to know, then what did somebody do? Yo, people was grabbing him, but he wouldn't stop. And if you know Puff, Puff wasn't no, like, no dude that... He was no weak guy, nothing like that. You understand? I seen Puff slam the many of guys. I used to laugh. You know, guys used to come up there and they try to grab him or whatever like that. Puff used to wrestle and play football. So I seen him grab some, some, some street dudes that thought they was like that. And he put them on their back quick. No diddy. Yeah, that's crazy. And when you was doing security for her, was he controlling? Like, was he worried about where she was going and keeping tabs on her? He couldn't control her. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he, I had left bad boy. That would be the last thing that Puff would try to do is come and confront me or confront Misa when she with me. You understand? And plus, he wasn't doing right by her, his own child at that time. He wasn't doing right by uh, Justin with Misa at that time. So my whole thing about it, he wasn't going to do that. Not at all. That would be the last thing he would have did. We don't play those games. If I'm protecting Misa, Misa is protected. From baby, from baby daddies, from boy, ex-boyfriends, from whoever. My job is to get her back in her car safe and make sure she get on that highway and get home. And that's what I did. So he wasn't going to do that. Not at all. It was also another situation where he felt a type of way about her being with Suge, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> We had just got through, I think um, we were looking for Kim. And Kim wasn't home. So if Kim not home, we don't go home. So we jump into club after club after club until Diddy finds her. So then he'll have the babysit call her and find out where she at or whatever, this, that, and the third. And then we would have to go to the club that she at. And he wasn't even, well, he never stopped dating Kim. No, I don't care who he, who he was with. It could have been with J-Lo. It could have been with whoever. He never stopped dating Kim. He was, Kim couldn't date or be with nobody. She just couldn't. So now, this damn wolf, he, I guess he was, holding this magazine in his pocket or whatever. And it wasn't, it, it was like a, like a brochure or something like that, but it was death row. And it was Suge Knight with Misa. Now, when I told this story, nobody believed that because you don't, don't believe shit I say until it comes out in pictures or videos. It had Suge Knight next to Misa. Suge had the baby in I mean, Misa had Justin in her arms and Suge Knight was just like holding Misa, I think, like this, holding Misa. It was a friendly picture. 
But on the bottom capture of it, it said, what the East Coast won't take care of, the West Coast will. Yo, Wolf showed that to Puff. You could see veins coming through his forehead, through his neck and everything. He blew a stack. It was crazy. So, Misha was everything but a child of God. But you got to realize, Puff wasn't giving her the money that she needed to take her adjusting properly and her for her living and whatever. So now, um, years later, fast forward, we see Suge with the same thing he had on in that magazine on the floor. Somebody released some pictures of him and Justin. He playing with Justin on the floor like he Papa Suge. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he wasn't going to put his hand on Misha. Nah, he wasn't going to do that because Misha would have definitely, she would have definitely at that time had him dealt with. I want you to look at this photo, right? Check out this photo with Diddy with a medical rapper on his wrist. What's this after the fight he had with Kim Porter? Yeah, that's the same time, man. <laughs> same hand, right hand. If you look at it, it's on his his right wrist, right up in there. Kim hit like it, 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 it almost severed the artery. He was yo, he was ble he was bleeding like crazy, and yo. That's the reason, and that's when that opioid crisis came out. That's the reason I knew that shit was serious, because that's what got Puff hooked on drugs. Wow, yeah, I got this from a photographer. He said that he took this in 1996 at a 112 video shoot. But for the people that don't know the story, right, let the people know what led to, you know, Kim Porter slashing Puffy Risk with a corkscrew. Right. Well... I was off that weekend because I usually have Puff on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Friday after work, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, he was staying with Kim the whole weekend, so he said he wasn't going out. He wasn't going to do anything. So I said, cool. He told me I was off. So now um, I get a call. It's on a Saturday. And uh, it's from Kirk Burroughs. And Paul, they were like, yo, Gene, Puff is by himself over at St. Luke's Hospital. I was like, yeah, what happened? You say, yo, they say, yo, Gene, you got to get over there because ain't nobody, you know, nobody there with him. Blase, this, this, that, and the third. So I rushed over to St. Luke's Hospital. I see Kim, she, uh, they in the emergency room. Um, flash my badge. I go up in there. I ask them what room we in. They, they let me know. So boom, um, I see Kim. Kim is, she's in distress. And you could tell that by her arms being folded, she was, she was like, if, I, if, if, I, if I'm describing it, she was, she was in distress herself, whereas that she, could have been in pain. She could have been hurting because I did see a bruise on her face and I seen bruises on her arm. I seen bruises on her arm and on her hand. And then Puff was sitting in the chair and with the thing wrapped around his arm telling Kim that this is how I make my living. You, you could, you could, what you call my living. You could mess up my whole living. She was trying, he was trying to make her feel bad. So I was like, what the F is happening? So I'm just listening to the dialogue between them two. And he's sitting up there blaming her. And then she was like, yo, I told you to stop. And then she, she wouldn't say it. She said, I told you to stop. You wouldn't stop. So then the nurses came in there. He had to have, you know, some kind of surgery and everything like that. And uh, that was it. It was from them fighting. Kim said, Kim said, because I asked her, 
I see Kim said that he wouldn't stop hitting me and I grabbed the court screw and, and made a mistake and caught him on the wrist. It's a hell of a mistake, Kim. <laughs> so that's what happened. Wow. And you said that's what got him hooked on drugs? That's what got him hooked. That was guy. He couldn't get off those, he couldn't get off those pills. Man, we used to have this, we used to meet this little, well, he used to meet this little white guy that he would give Puff a bottle of pills like this. Like once, like every three to three to five days, you know what I'm saying? Every three to five days, uh, they would have a pill bottle like this for fifteen hundred dollars. And this little white kid, whatever Puff called him, he was that with him. I don't know where he was getting them from. Maybe his father, he worked at a pharmacy. His father was a, a doctor or whatever. But this was way before that crisis came in. These was, uh, uh, what they call them? Uh, not Tylenol or codeine, but these were straight, I think codeine or uh, opioids or some shit like that. Just out of curiosity, right? Why do you think Misa came out with that statement, knowing that Diddy is going through everything he's going through right now? I think it had. I I, I can't speak for her, but if I'm I'm looking at it, is that, you know, she want people to be have sympathy for the kids. You gotta understand. She's and she said that. It's like, you know, she's the only mother now, other than Sarah. And Sarah was Kim's best friend, but she's closer, you know, to Quincy because Quincy used to, and Justin and them used to go to each other's house. You know what I mean? Justin used to go to uh, uh, Kim's house and, and Quincy used to hang out with Justin. You know? So they grew up like brothers like that. It's funny, man. You got to realize Kim was Misa friend. Then she goes and have a baby uh, by Puff. And Sarah was Kim's friend. And she goes and have a baby by Puff. So it's all in the family. So Misa is looking for the best interest of the boys and the kids. And I guess as a mother, you know, and they they grown now, you know, they 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 in their twenties now, except for the two youngest girls, she'll be, she'll try to be the best example she could for them. Cause they, they still need a mother-like person in their life. Yeah. You got to respect that. Shout out to her for doing that, man. But how you feel about King Combs? He came out with a diss track coming at 50 and coming at everybody coming at his pops. How you feel about it, yo? Well, first I want to say to this young man before somebody take his head off. Cause see, that's that new, that's that new school bulls crap that these kids out here, they easy to fly off their mouth with that. You don't invite a man to your private. You don't invite a man to your private unless you doing the ditty. If two men lay down, how many homos get up? Let me tell you, young man, two of them. You understand? So don't invite a man to your private because that man will see you and take your head off. Especially somebody like 50. You don't send or let a boy do a man's job. I don't know if he need that type of attention or he want that type of attention. Evidently he do. But Fifth is the wrong dude that you want to do that type of attention, get that kind of attention from, bro. And the infamous words of Waka Flocka, that nigga go hard in the paint. And I don't believe that this cat would even put out some trash like that and really didn't know what he was doing. He's teasing the federal government. And I told y'all, the Southern District of New York do not play. So King Kong just 
put another battery in their back. And you see, after he did that shit, something get leaked to the press. Do you notice that, right? As soon as he did that dumb shit, talking about, well, we did this and we did that. We had this over here. Y'all went to the wrong house. Some went to, he said, well, we're going to show you how wrong we are. Yo, CN CNN, run this. Action, roll them. Don't play with the feds, bro. Because you got to realize this. They got a lot of time. All they got to do, it. all they got is time. Yo, they going to sit there, people sitting up there, and they want something. See, people like a fix. They, they need that fix real quick. They want to, they want them to hurry up and charge Diddy with something or uh, see what they got on him. The feds are going to take their time. May take six months, may take a year, may take two years. They got up to three years to bring their case up. They got three years. So they checking everything about them. They're going to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people feel like he played a part in that video coming up. You know, him making a comment saying that, you know, they forgot to raid the house next door that his dad owned. Yeah, man, he was walling out, man. <laughs> yeah, I think he was just bullshitting. I don't believe he bought the house next door. Because let me just tell you something. If anything or any name that had to do with bad boy the federal government going to run that. They know all the properties did he have. They wasn't even talking about the raid that they did in New York, but they did a raid in New York too. Yeah, I ain't hear about that raid. I only heard about the, you know, the LA and Miami raid, but you feel like the feds, they released that video over King Kong's comments. Oh man, I've worked in law enforcement for 27 years. And I had the opportunity to see Haida. It's a place, whereas they have the state, the feds, the NYPD, the Department of Cor Corrections, and the state police. Yo, this place could be half of a basketball court. That's where they just got lines of computers with officers of all different people and officers just on the internet. Whoever's over that case, whoever's working that case, don't you know they saw that and took it to their boss? You might think it's petty, but it's not. You do not agitate A lion with a pork chop. And that's what that kid did, bro. Some people feel like, you know, Diddy, he played a part in that video coming out too. You know, him being spotted with Stevie J, smiling at the camera. You know, a lot of people blame him too. But bro, what did I tell you? He's such a narcissist that he has to be in the public. He had, yo, listen to me. They just caught him on TMZ today or yesterday or something like that, walking out and about. Now, I'm not telling the man what to do, whatever, what he couldn't do. I don't know if the government told he couldn't travel nowhere, he couldn't be nowhere and stuff like that. But why are you going to go outside your own compound where you know TMZ and every other place is waiting on you? You're not going to get any public sympathy. That's why he had that picture of him and his father around his neck. You're not going to get no sympathy. You're done. Stick a fork in it. Call it a quit. Apologize to Big's mother for putting this, your, her son in that position that he loses his life. It's crazy. He better do a Russell Simmons. Yeah, a lot of people saying that, man. They saying that he going to pull a Russell Simmons.
Well, anything's possible, bro, but uh, but I don't know if the feds will allow him since they got an open investigation on him. The leaked tape of Diddy abusing Cassie, how do you think they got out? A lot of people is wondering how they got out. How do you think you personally, your personal opinion, we all got our own personal opinion. How do you think he got out? Well, I heard that they said Cassie had a copy. I heard that the hotel, because they, they got a server, they have a server. But when they did an investigation on Cassie and when Cass we heard that Cassie was helping them, she has to tell them every place that she can remember where he abused her at. And then when she tells them that, an investigator going to go back and see, is there any physical evidence? Oh, you in the hotel? Oh, it's got to be physical evidence. Let me go and see, do they have a tape for this day and this time? So it don't matter how they got it. Because once it goes into that server, the feds can get it at any time. They can get it out the clouds. Everything is going into the clouds now. So once it goes into those servers, that's it. It's a wrap. Somebody probably sucker them. Yo, listen, I'll give you a copy of the tape and I'll destroy the tape. Here you go. He gives them the money like she said it. She said it. She gave the money. He thought he only had the copy. Because some people were saying that when they raided his house, that was one of the copies and stuff like that. We should wonder how C-E-N got it. <laughs> How CNN got it? How did they get it? That's the question. Why do you think any of Diddy friends haven't spoke up for him yet? My man, listen here. All those ones, all the all those ones who made it to the Diddy party, to the after party, and to the hotel lobby, <laughs> they not gonna ruin their brand. They not going to say nothing. Man, I was watching the other day. Listen to me. They did that. They on Channel 2 News here in New York. Gail King and Nate and that other guy, they were talking about, they showed the, the, the uh, him beating Cassie and they showed him uh, the apology in the whole nine yards. All they said is that we have commentary about that, but we got to go to a commercial. They never came back and said nothing about it. I was like, yo, damn. He still got power like that? Somebody still like him like that? Because you know he was running with Oprah and them. He was running with that whole crew. Weinstein, Oprah, Epstein. He was running with that whole crew. They want to know how we're going to do it, how the public is going to take him. Is the public going to uh, let him back in? And the public is not. The public is already canceling him. I don't believe the industry has canceled him yet. All those people who went to those Diddy parties, not one of them had came out and denounced what he has done. I haven't heard one of them. I have not heard one person denounce, well, man, let, let God handle it. Let, get the hell out of here. Get out of here with that. If that was your daughter, would you let God handle it? All those people, they ain't denounced them. They ain't definitely, they, they, they can't. They can't come forward and, and say, yo, I support them because it would mess up their brand. It would mess up their brand. Jay-Z, we the only one could call each other Sean. Jay, Jay is the only one calling me, could call me Sean. I'm the only one could call him Sean. Get the hell out of here. 
If that ain't no fun boy stuff, but you ain't had not one person, brother, not one person sit there, denounce what he did, or come forward and say, I support him. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Nobody haven't came out to support him, man. Not one person outside of Stevie J. Stevie don't count, bro. <laughs> right, right. But I got to ask you, man, you know, today being Biggie's birthday, man. Shout out to Biggie, man. But I just want to get your opinion on this. Do you think Diddy should be held accountable for Biggie's murder? No doubt. I didn't think that way, you know, because... I'm too, I too was traumatized in a way, to be totally honest. When you pull somebody out the car and they done pissed and they done shit on themselves, and you know you got that dead weight in your hand and you got to sit down there and tell his man mother, you know, what you heard, what you saw after this dude that lied to his mother. That's trauma, bro. I don't give, I don't care how hard you is. And Biggie ain't the only dude that I've seen get murdered in a party, at a party, or being murdered. But he's the only one that I had to grab in my hands and carry and help put him on a, a gurney, a stretcher. He's the only one that I got to constantly hear his music on the radio. He's the only one that I can't get Miss Wallace out of my mind when she grabbed both of my hands and said, I don't want to hear no more with tears in her eyes, man. To have an experience like that for probably and arguably the world's greatest rapper of all time, that's crazy, bruh. So now, he's responsible for not having enough security. He's responsible for having Big there. He's responsible for not listening to security by telling him, if we go to this party, one of us going to die tonight. Somebody gonna get killed tonight. They coming to kill us, Puff. I want these kids to know. Ain't no party that big. Ain't no party that good. Ain't no party you should go if you feel or you told that you may not go home. He owed Ms. Wallace. He owed Ms. Wallace. And I didn't feel that way at first until I heard it said on another YouTube show when Clark Kent said that Big told him the only reason he was going to that party is because D-Rock and Puff set it up for them to go. And you said when you got Biggie out the court, he was what? My man, he had urinated and he had shitted on himself. Wow, man. So with all that being said, what do you think should happen to Diddy for Biggie murder? Like I said, I can't. I'm not the judge. I'm not the jury. I think that way back then, because of Arista Records and Bad Boy, knowing that there was threats. And and you heard Puff lie a couple of times in the past. I didn't know. I didn't know. Nobody told us. We was just young. You knew. You knew. You heard him lie as if he didn't know. And then he put his boys, Mark Pitts and Wayne Barrow, right over there in Ms. Wallace's ear. Whereas that she should have been filing a lawsuit 
against Clyde Davis and Arista and Bad Boy Records for the death of her son because they did not have the proper security for the notorious big. In the height of what was determined the East Coast, West Coast war in hip hop. So what they should do is too late for that now. What should happen? God got to decide that, bro. Wow. Is there any charges they can pit on Diddy for Biggie's murder? No, they don't. They don't. They, don't uh, they know LAPD know who killed Big. They made a deal that those records will never be released in our time. We'll all be gone. All the people who was probably around there is 50 years. They sealed those records for 50 years. And then if they still seal them, seal them, and the 50 years come up, up and the 50 years come time, that don't mean they got to release the records. Look what they did to John F. Kennedy, his files. The 50 years is up. What they went back and they closed it. They, they closed it back again. Do you think Diddy should be held accountable in some kind of way for two profit death? If he's found guilty, if he found an associate an associate with anybody that caused the death of Tupac, he should be held accountable. Man, listen to me, bro. I was having a conversation with somebody and they were saying, the feds are so deep and involved in this that Diddy just might be called up on that Tupac once they go through the money trail. Once do they go through the money trail and find out why certain people was given certain positions, that it's gonna, it may be a problem. Because they're going to look at all that. Anything they can bring up, they're going to bring it up. Wow. So you think it's possible that they might pit Pac murder on Diddy? Yeah. That's why that tape of Cassie was re released. So anybody who was willing to try to help him, anybody was trying to say that he ain't capable of doing this and he ain't capable of doing that, they got it right there on videotape. But you being around at that time, right, because you was working at Bad Boy at that time when, you know, the whole pocket big thing was going on, you personally, do you think they can get Diddy on Pac murder? Well, they always said something about um, a million dollar check and nobody knew where the million dollar came from. Puff may have said it in a couple of rap songs and things like that. But they would have to tra trace the check back to if that check Eric Von Zip had. And um, I'm not going to say the person who they said they gave it to because I've said it before and I told people who contacted me that I wouldn't bring old boy name up on there because of situations that he's having in the federal government right now. So if they trace it back to Eric Von Zip and say, why were you on, and he's dead now, but th they have to explain why did he was able to get some publishing money or some kind of deal off the sale of Black Ground Records and they put him as tank manager or tank something for tank, this, that, and the third. Why did they do that? Yeah, I got you. And when you say check, right, just to get some clarity for the people that don't know what you're talking about, you talking about the million dollar check, right, that they put on Tupac to get him killed, the hit? Yeah. Yeah, what I'm talking about is is that if Puff has said on a couple of records that he'll pay a million dollars to, you know, he but he was just talking to people randomly. So now everybody said that, and Keefe D said that Puff told them that he'll give them a million dollars. Now, do we believe that? 
I don't know. I don't think so. I don't. Because it was situations where it's that it could have got done by certain peoples that was around them, but it didn't happen. So when Zip came up with the check for a million dollars, he said it was from Black Ground Records. And he said that who he got that if that money from. So now, if that's true, then the feds would have to go in and do a money trace on where did that check come from. And then they're going to say, why? Why was that check given to Eric Von Zip or Eric Zip Martin or Eric Martin? Why did that check was given to him? And saying that he had something to do with Tank and he sold the company, which wasn't all his company anyway, for a million dollars. Yeah, we're going to see what happens, man. But that would be crazy, man, if Pac murder is one of the reasons why, you know, Diddy is behind bars, man. Yeah, that would be wild, man. But what you think about the new accuser? It's a new accuser. I think she's a model. She accusing Diddy of, you know, lacing up her weed and forcing her to give him fellatio. What you think about that, man? What I think about the new lawsuit against him is that it's going to be a lot of people coming forward against him. Women, men, because there's men that said that he tried to make them give him a fellatio. That woman said he tried to make her get her fellatio. I think she was a Sean John model. You know what I'm saying? So my thing of it is this, brother. When he has proven that he's a liar, he has proven that he's willing to hide the truth and he can't be trusted and his word ain't shh. His word is nothing no more. Anything that somebody says against him is going to be considered the truth, bro. Anybody could come out and say that he did this and he did that. Whether wrong, right, or indifferent. Anybody could say that now. Because he's lied to the public for so long with this Cassie stuff. When she say that Diddy gave her lace weed, do you believe that? You being around Diddy at one point, is that, you know, something that he'll do? When I knew uh, Puff, he didn't smoke weed. And and then I, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, 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 I'm looking at the dates and the times. You know what I'm saying? And I think it was 2003. And I was still with Bad Boy in 2003. And I ain't heard nothing about that. Yeah, I mean, she also claims that Diddy blackboard her. Well, well, they have, they do that all the time, bro. Did you hear his own vice president or, or A&R or whatever tell the whole making of a band? If y'all leave, if y'all don't do what he tell y'all to do, y'all never work in the music industry again. And I think that one or two of them maybe became battle rappers. But they never made a song again. They got power like that, bro. Yeah, I remember that episode, too. And you right, man. I mean, after that show, they didn't do anything, man. So, yeah, as I think about it, yeah, you right about that, man. So did he be blackballing people? Yeah. He told Craig Mack. If you don't get rid of your manager, this is Craig Mack with his own independent manager. He said, if you don't get rid of your manager, you ain't going <laughs> to, I ain't going to never fuck with you again. And you will never work in the music industry. But what Suge Knight was going to do, you know, Craig Mack was going to be the number one artist on Death Row East. He was going to be their first artist. So he was going to take that and flip them. Wow. So he'd be blackballing people. Because I always heard that rumor, but I never knew if it was true or not. So They do it to everybody, bro. If you don't go their way, if you don't do what they tell you to do and how they want it done, 
They're going to blackball you. When you was around Diddy, did you ever see him put his hands on Jennifer Lopez? Well, he didn't do any violence to Mrs. J-Lo. That's why I didn't see any violence. It's a different breed, bro. He wasn't going to risk himself like that. And plus, a lot of people didn't like him. J-Lo mother didn't like him. Benny Medina didn't like him. You understand? So now, the first thing, he, if he would have ever touched Miss Lopez in any kind of aggressive way, she would have said something. Man, listen to me. The whole Bronx would have been on puff. He wasn't going. He didn't treat her like that, bro. He didn't. He didn't do none of that old crazy stuff. That play fight. That uh, beating them with pillows and all that other shit like that. Smothering them and you know, doing that childish. Shit. He didn't do that. I never seen him do that with Miss Lopez. At all. So it's a different class. It's, it, you know, he knew that she was an actress. She was a singer songwriter, whatever like that, all her um, accolades. He did put her on a pedestal, but he still was seeing Kim, but he put her on a pedestal. So I don't, I don't think that she had those experiences. And then, you know, people only let you do what, people only do what you let them do. If he would have did that to her, he would only have one time. You see, when he ran out the club and left her after that shooting at Shine, <laughs> she ain't want to be with him up no more. <laughs> Yo, she he left her. You know what I mean? So he wasn't going to treat her like, you know, he was treating the rest of them. But why do you think she hasn't spoke up yet? Like, I'm sure she know a lot, right? I just, I, I don't think Ms. Lopez, I don't think he treated her that way. You know, I don't think he treated her with any uh, uh, aggression like that. And if he did, it wasn't on my watch. He would always, like, make excuses. Like, she was about to, she was about to go off a couple of times in the studio because the girls that was up in there was disrespectful to her. So, but... I, I, I don't think that she, I don't think that she has a story where Puff was trying to be abusive or was abusive to her. I see, I see. But I want to backtrack, right? Because you made a comment, and I want you to go more into detail about it. You said that Diddy, when he was with Jennifer Lopez, he was still seeing Kim Porter? Yeah. Kim couldn't go nowhere. Kim couldn't go nowhere, bro. Kim couldn't have no relationships. Kim couldn't be at no club. If he called Kim's house, and at this time she had this little Spanish-looking girl, and she might have a case. <laughs> she might have a case. <laughs> it was Christian babysitter. She might get in touch with a lawyer. Whew. That's all I'm going to say on that one. His babysitter. What, what's the deal with that? What you mean by that? Kim had a babysitter that Puff had in his pocket, whereas that she would tell everything Kim was doing, every place Kim was going, and, and I would catch her over at Puff House in the morning, and Christian wasn't there, Justin wasn't there. Nobody was there. And I would put her in the cab so she could go home. When I came there, some Saturday mornings, Saturday and Sunday morning. Wow. So the babysitter that was working for Kim Porter, she was going behind her back and telling Diddy everything that she was doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. So the whole time that him and Jennifer Lopez was dating, he was still seeing Kim Porter and controlling her at the same time. Everything. Knew everything Kim was doing. He didn't have to have cameras. He had eyes and ears. Yeah, that's crazy, man. He wasn't even with her, and he was still following her every move, man. But yeah, man, I can't believe it, man. I'm still in disbelief by that video, man. Yeah, it ain't looking good for Diddy, man. Oh. Yeah, it might be over, man. You can stick a fork in him. He's done. 
No diddy. But you can stick a fork in him. He's done. There's no, there's no way that he could ever come back from this. He has to find a way to pay his penances with God. Do some charity work for domestic. I'm, I'm helping him out. You understand? Get rid of all these elusive preachers and everything, these T.D. Jakes and all that other bull crap. Get down with that down-home religion. Go and support some women groups from domestic violence. Support and do some charity work for women in battered shelters. Go and spend your life and your time helping men like yourself. Once you take care of your business and get on your knees and beg for Ms. Wallace's forgiveness for putting the notorious big in that situation that he lost his life. That's a start. What you think about Diddy Drug Mill taking a plea deal? Well, what I believe and what I think, he wasn't just a drug mule, he was a plant. He's a CI. That's a confidential informant. He already had a case prior to him getting that case with Diddy them. He probably already had a handle of somebody that he was just trying to work it out. And that's what he did. You think he told him any information about Diddy? Yeah, he got to. They're not going to give you a deal for nothing. Because you got caught with the drugs. Because you say they was for Diddy them. You got to give us something. And you think they're using all that information to indict Diddy? Oh, no doubt. They're taking their time, bro. They working on this and they taking their time. How you feel about the people that feel like, you know, at this point, you know, Diddy, his name is tarnished to the point that, you know, his own kids, they can't benefit from his name. I think because he, he I think because Diddy built this whole aura that he was about family, his kids, and he was trying to make them great. He was trying to put them in certain positions and stuff like that. I believe that it's going to hurt Justin, you know King Kong is out the window. <laughs> you know, he go, it's going to hurt him cra crazy. Quincy, maybe. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to, you know, people going to look at them and say, yo, listen here, if we have them on movies, if we have them on this, you know, what the mass public is going to say. What is the public at large is going to say about this? So a lot of people is not going to want to even be involved in that because they don't want other people and the, you know to be involved in it. You get what I'm saying? No, but no, no, no. Listen to me. He didn't done so much dirt to people and their kids. Why should people give his kids a chance? Gene Deal, man. Great interview, man. Great interview, like always, man. All the dialogue. Thank you for the residency here. You know, <laughs> giving me an opportunity, you know, to push my books. This is My World of Bodyguard and a Hip Hop Star. And the sequel, Life After Death, When Bodyguard and a Hip Hop Star. All original stories. You have, it's a must read, a good read. Go on Amazon or for signed copies, you could get in touch with me at biggene underscore five 
D U C E on R. You can see it on Amazon. Thank you. I appreciate y'all.